intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey, Star Trek Fleet Commander. Today, we're going to talk about what is important for you in the 40s, as in this game has just gone crazy with extra loops. I'm pretty sure everybody would agree in the comment section down below. Everybody's going to be like, yeah, there's so many loops. There's so many different things to grind after. And the one thing that I've been pushing really hard for the past year or two is you decide, or you should decide, what's important to you. It's not letting Sculpa decide, because if it was up to them, you'd do everything. And if you did everything, well, they would assume you were going to supplement that. <clears throat> so, how should you focus on things as a player in the 40s, and what should be the most important loops for you? Now, you see in the background, I'm currently doing some older armadas, or older at this point, which are Cardassians, which is just kind of required for running these new uh, battle pass events because they replaced the worms with these and if you'll notice now this is going to only apply to those who watch this you know the, the two weeks that this video comes out but here is your calendar for the upcoming and as you can see the style of events you have some newer things here that weren't there traditionally as well as some of the things you've gotten very used to like incursions so as a player what should you focus on like what has the most value i want to cover that and try to Go into a little bit of detail without going super, super deep. So like, for example, do you need to do Cardassian armadas all the time? No. In fact, generally, there's no real reason to do these, except they're pretty easy and they have good payouts if you've done the subsequent research. But in terms of like the Bajoran loop, this technically coming out during the Bajoran loop, this is not very important content. Like you don't really have to worry about doing this, except for maybe events. And that just allows you to do armadas instead of maybe hitting the hostiles. But you can do the hostiles instead. But I will start with what I believe, what I think many people out there believe is the most important loop for players in the 40s. And I don't think it's even close. I'm just going to be honest. I don't. There are a lot of loops. And I'm not going to talk about every loop in the game. In fact, if you watch this video and say, hey, Rev, I'm level 44 and I think this loop is great, feel free to tell everybody why you think it's great and why it's good for you. Let me talk about why I believe the Bajor loop is the most important loop for you out there. Yes, it is a time intensive loop, as in it includes solar armadas and a actual grind that you go through for the hostile exchange. And you do want to be able to go triple pull this, you, especially early on. Now, once you finish the Bajoran, as in like you get max rep, you've got the favors, you don't necessarily need to triple pull that anymore. But that should be a goal for every player to triple pull your hostile exchange. Now, I know I'm talking about doing a lot of work for a loop, but let me show you why it matters. So not only do the Bajoran favors have some of the best research in the game, uh, as you can see, I've maxed it out. There's some amazing research in there, and I strongly encourage you to do those researches. In fact, I, mean, I did a whole video about Bajor a long time ago, and the favors stuff still stands because they didn't really add anything to it. But beyond just the favors, here's the big one for why I press so much on the 40s. Because so many of y'all who are in the 40s, what is one of your number one complaints in the game? The economy. You want more things from the economy, right? Whether it's ship parts, uncommon materials, rares, officers, etc. You want more and you deserve more. Well, this gives you that. How does it give you that? Well, number one, especially once you get to the point where you've gone in, you've maxed your rep and you're doing well for your level, you can start doing your material claims chest. And to the point where I would say you can start max pulling. So here's me doing a three chests and the RNG here, honestly, not that great. It's technically less than a thousand four star uncommon. That's, a, that's actually a little bit more. It's a thousand four star uncommon. Here's why that's great. Look at the timer on that chest, 22 hours. So every day, now is a low pull because technically you could get more. If you're doing a triple pull. You could get higher amounts. It does vary. A thousand uncommon from that? What, what about this chest? Which is basically the exact same chest, but using a different currency that you get from the armadas. Well, that could be 1,300 of one type. So you just witnessed me get 2,300-ish uncommons in a single day. That's more than I would get from a typical event. One day. Now multiply that by 30. That's over 60,000 uncommons from those two boxes alone. That's not anything else I get in the game. Why is Bajor so good to focus on? Because it has so many long-term advantages. The Defiant is a solid ship. It is not as good as the Talios or even the Voyager, but it helps you get that edict currency that allows you to get more of some of the things in the game. And I still pull my stuff, even though I've already got my Voyager, I'm sorry, my Defiant max my level, but 
there is value in here. And the big thing is also, it doesn't just stop with the material claims. The uncommon loot exchange, the rares, the epics, etc. These are going to give you your ship parts, trade XP, and going to allow you to start working on officers. Once you kind of get deeper in the 40s, this gets better. Where you see I almost have Benjamin Sisko maxed out. I still don't have epics from five years ago maxed out. But I'm about to max out Benjamin Sisko. And I have maxed out Changing Kira. And I have maxed out Miles O'Brien. Who is arguably one of the most important Armada officers in the game. I don't even think it's arguable. He's that heckin' good. This also helps with rare ship parts down the road. So the biggest thing with the Bajoran Loop is you're getting help in economies that really, really put a burden on you. The second most important one I would say, and the reason that it gets so high on my list is because it's so heckin' easy to do. It's the Monovine. The Monovine really isn't something that you have to do until you're in the 50s, as in like you will get the most benefit from the Monovine in the 50s, but he still has value early on. Through its refinery. Now there are a solar armada loop for this. It can basically carry itself through its own solar armadas. You're basically just bringing two meat shields with it. The automated shipyard sadly has a three day cooldown compared to the one day cooldown of the Bajoran loop, but does give you uncommons and rares that we just talked about. And then you have your daily turn in, which you can do this from auto grinding. Like you don't actually have to do anything with the monovine, except if you want to have your automated shipyard pulls. And then that'll give you the materials you need and eventually. Lots of partial titanium and lithium that you will need in the five-star economy, but can also help you now if you're short on a pinch. I could come in here right now and get 28.5 billion titanium. That's good. All right, now granted, higher level here, but I'm talking about what values you in the 40s. This has got to be probably number two. The reason I have it number two is because it's so easy. Now, keep in mind that I'm just talking loops. There are two things that you should do every day regardless of loops, and that's it. Dailies, which should take you less than 30 minutes, and your Battle Pass event. Everything else is extra. We just say that here, everything else is land yet. It's nice, it's a bonus, it's extra. So after dailies, and then after your Battle Pass, Bajoran Loop. Then after that, doing your Monovine, which thankfully is quite easy. Now, here's where I think people are probably going to debate me a little bit, and I welcome the debate. I truly do. You can hit me up on Discord for this, or we can actually just comment down below. I'm going to say, even though I like Voyager, really do, I would say the third most important loop in the game that you probably don't want to do in the 40s is X-Borg. That includes the NX-01 and Zindi. Why am I so big on this one? Because in a lot of ways, it is what DS9 is, just in a painful way with the silent hostiles. Now, what do I mean by that? I will say that the favor system is not as good as Bajor, but there is still some very valuable favors in here. So you have to be a little bit more picky, but there is still some really good ones in here, including some of the things I have here, like efficiencies for how I upgrade my ships. Again, how much it costs you to upgrade those ships and ship parts and materials can be a pain point. Another thing that is valuable to me is the temporal artifact sourcing. Every single day, you get a daily drip of temporal disruptors. And if you manage to kill the silent hostiles and do your double pull, you're getting enough to get 600 temporal disruptors a day actually heckin' good. We like that. We praise that. This is still a painful run for a lot of players in the 40s. And I think what should happen is players should see the x faction as your measuring stick on whether your account is where it needs to be at your level. Because if you are, say, level 46 and you can't beat your armadas or you can't beat your silent hostiles specifically, you have probably proceeded too quickly to where you're at and need to slow down. And this is a good barometer of a player that is high up for their level. Now, that doesn't mean spending. That simply means how well you're able to produce. As y'all have seen in my Discord, John Connor, just give him a shout out real quick. He's level 39 with a max enterprise taking out like 14 of the silent 40s. So it can be done, but it is something that is a pain point. If you remember, for those players who've been around a while, DS9 was the same way. DS9 started off much rougher before getting adjustment, and I'm still hoping that silence get adjusted. But because of the temporal artifact sourcing and because you have these things later on, like the mega chest, which is dolomite particle sourcing, very valuable, as well as more uncommons, epics, rares, as well as ship parts, all of these have value to speeding up your economy. So that's why I have it slightly above the Voyager, even though the Voyager is really good for getting ship parts. But the Voyager doesn't help get as much 
as this does if you're able to complete the X Borth. Now, please be aware, I am not saying that Voyager is bad. I'd actually say Voyager is the fourth most important loop to do if you're a player in the 40s. You want to progress through that. It has some amazing research, and it has some very helpful things to do in its own refinery. But the Section 31 and the x -Borg, even though they're recent, have loaded in a ton of the things that I would argue probably should have been just normal quality of life updates. The game is what it is. So... I would say that is number three. Number four, I then would go to the Voyager and say this is incredibly important, incredibly valuable from the various things that you can unlock. Artifact sourcing being the big thing here. Your traditional artifacts, which still have value, are all right here. Now, the good news is the temporal artifacts, if you're doing that loop that I just mentioned, actually makes this even more valuable because you can get to those artifacts and max them out quicker thanks to X Borg. So another reason I have X Borg slightly ahead of Voyager. But then after that, you have something which is great as you progress and as you get more commerce insignias through, say, summoning the Borg message cube over in its special Dairy Queen systems, you can speed up old loops like maybe if you are like Rev and have ignored your Dvorfisha. Feel free to shame me. It's okay. I deserve it. So that would be number four that I would say you want to focus on, you want to get that done, but little bit less than the other and then the last but not least even though it has tremendous value i would say section 31. now hopefully by this point you're done with your stella loop you're done with your vidar loop you still have your talios and talios is important but i would say the talios is mainly important for getting hue at this point the sourcing of the independent credits that's good but I would still have the Talios down the list. But there are some things that hopefully you're finished with in the 40s. Like you're no longer focusing on your Stella loop or your Discovery loop or any of those. Hopefully you've progressed to the point where you've left those behind. And then this has a ton of value. It's just so much work because of what Wave Defense requires. You spending time with your Alliance to get the credits that you need. But you can't deny the value of the Syndicate XP, of the Dolomite Drip every day as well as the bonuses the Section 31 transmitter gives you for the building itself. So that would be my top five in terms of loops that you should be focusing on in the 40s. And there are other loops that you should do at various points. For example, that Talios loop. Don't ignore the Talios. You want to do your solo armadas. But in terms of the grand scheme of things, does the Talios have the value it did when it first came out? No, but I would still say, hey, you need independent credits. This is a great way to source them. If you're needing faction credits, this is a great way to source them. So there is value to it, but I do want to point out that maybe not at the top of my to-do list if I'm a player in the 40s. So those are my top grinds you should focus on. Now, if you have to still focus on some older grinds, that's okay. Remember, the game should be played at your pace, not the game designer's pace, because honestly, they push you pretty heckin' fast. Like they expect you to basically be level 60 within a year. And that's just, most of us aren't going to do that. I'm sitting at level 50, I've been here for a long time, or I've been playing my slower style for a long time, and I am loving it. Let me know what you think down below, and if you disagree with my order, I would love to hear your comments. I, I truly would. Really, what the biggest pain points are for me come down to things like uncommons, ship parts, which apply to most things in the game, for research, ship upgrades, etc., including specialty ships. But there are things I didn't acknowledge, like tear up catalysts being a huge thing. Clearly, I expect you to do your Q's trials every day, but how much did you really focus on stuff like that? Well, y'all let me know what you think about this down below. This is an opportunity for everybody to give some good advice to new players because we have like 100,000 people in the 30s and another 70,000 in the 40s. So there's a lot of people who maybe need a little bit of help. So if you need any from me, hit me up on Facebook, hit me up on Discord. Appreciate every single one of you. Live long and plunder. Stay safe with the Space Cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next Star Trek League of Man video and stream, which is basically every day. An even better outro than the intro for the empire and glory to your house.